Welcome back to another episode of the Vile Files Reality Recap Edition. We've changed, we slightly augmented the name while you were gone, okay. Amanda. See, I saw RR in the calendar and I was like, I'm not going to be away. And then the first thing I do is be like, someone made a little typo. <laughs> but yeah. I'm now, I don't make now typos, I know. Amanda. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> well, that's what, oh, another part of the reason I said it was I was like, times are changing. <laughs> yeah. Well, the household is in full force. Amanda is back from her sabbat we, we, I, sabbatical. Sabbatical? No, I he's called it a life, yeah, I called it a life class. It every week. A life journey. <laughs> a life journey. Sabbatical. <laughs> Like, I don't even know. Yeah. I was soaking it's, up quality time with my grandparents. It's Chrissy 2.0 when he said he, she was yeah. like going to be a park ranger. <laughs> Anyways, we're back in full force. We have Genevieve, Amanda, Ali, Derek, and our special, special guest for today's recap, Manon Matthews joins us. Whoop, whoop. Wow. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thank you. For the listeners, uh, Manon is waving, but yeah. she's only bending her fingers. <laughs> it's, the, it's the influencer. I think I'm really famous wave. We ran into each other at Golden Heart. Were you... You, no, you stalked you didn't, me. I didn't yeah, you. I stalked you. Yeah. Golden Heart. Where, where what was that? that? What's that place? Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon. I was it's, in a deep, deep conversation and you walked in. I was like, Ugh, but and then, I tried to be present Didn't we run into each friends. other earlier or met, maybe meet some other time? I, I saw you one other time from afar. But right. we have talked about you coming on yeah. multiple times. And here we are. Finally. We're finally full force. We did it. So much to get into. Reality recap. I mean, you know, The Bachelor took some time off. And then in that time, our show has evolved and crushed into... It blossomed into so much more. And so we're here to recap your Bachelor episodes, obviously, obviously. But there is just so much more to cover that we can't possibly just designate an entire episode solely just on Bachelor-related content. So if you're here for The Bachelor, we got you. It's covered. It's cool. But there's also so much more. So we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves into just Bachelorette recaps or Bachelor recaps. So reality recaps. Freestyle. That, you could argue anything's a reality recap. Truly. Keeping it real. You yeah. know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All reality. Thank you. It's all, all reality. It's all reality. Yeah. Yeah. You want to? <laughs> cool. All right. Great, great momentum, guys. Great. Yeah. So this is well, the part where you guys. reality recap is going yeah, really well. Crushing it. Okay, uh, well, speaking of, did you guys see that we have a new Golden Bachelor? He was officially announced. We do, yeah. We've been waiting on this, this is show a for a guy. really long time. So far, first reactions, 10 out of 10. I want to go on the show have, to date a 71-year-old. Guys, if he looks like you, that. You all agree with me. I know you do. That would be such fun drama if all the women are in their like, <sighs> 60s, 70s, and then there's and just like one bitch in her 20s who's like, <laughs> hey, I'm really no, mature No, they should. Oh, my God. I mean, they should. Like, I don't know about 20, but like I'm sure 39. they'll get like some 40-year-old. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What about like, who's the babysitter? Yeah. This this guy is a catch. He's he is fine. a seventy-one-year-old grandpa from Indiana who will star oh. as ABC's first ever senior citizen leading man. Does he know yeah. Ben Higgins? Is that how they found him? Ben he, Higgins is from Indiana. Not everyone in Indiana knows each other. <laughs> There's not a lot of people in Indiana. There's not a lot of people in Wisconsin. Oh. You know, I know everyone in Wisconsin. Okay. <laughs> a retired restaurateur and doting father and grandfather, Jerry or Gary. Sorry, it's pronounced Gary. Lily lives in his dream house on a beautiful lake, just like your yeah. lake house. Oh my God. Ben's parents live on a you. lake, I believe. He's often busy hosting barbecues, saying. playing pickleball, cheering on his favorite Chicago sports teams, four wheeling. Oh, so he's active and spending time with friends and family at restaurants and local haunts. It wouldn't What's shock me. Haunt? I wouldn't shock me at all if Ben somehow knows this guy. He married shock. his high yeah, school like they went to church together at some Ooh. point or something. Because, uh, so if he's a Chicago fan that tells me he's from upper Indiana, yeah. uh, what a head of hair. Yeah. Oh. Do we think it's real? Who cares? Yeah, I th I think it, it looks, I, it looks real. Like good. Jim Jeffrey specials. Wakes for everyone or wakes for no one. That is, I mean, it looks real, but either way, it looks fantastic. He looks 49. He, he probably <laughs> dies it. Do you think he probably dies it? He, yeah. Yes. I think it's 71. That's just fine. You don't just have that. His his uh, facial hair looks good, too. He of, looks, yeah. and, and, and keeping with Bachelor kind of casting standards, he looks very tall. Oh, yeah. Like, look at him and his freaking... Outdoors just sitting by the lake? Harrison Ford. Lake. Oh my god. He looks like the ad for like a senior living facility. Like, because he like no, exudes yeah. confident and you're like, oh, that man has a vibrant social. He looks note like I, an ad for like whiskey. No, what I can't wait for. I cannot wait for. What? Well, I kind of, I low key hope for it. Okay. But not really. Not for, I mean, I don't wish this on Gary, but like, I just can't wait for they start filming the season and then like some 
woman or woman comes forward and be like, 34 years ago, like I fucked him and he didn't call me back, you know? Like he just calling him out for his fuckboy ways in like 1960. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you're waiting for him to. You can't wait for him to say I've fallen in love with two women. Oh well, that <laughs> that <laughs> too. Both no, but I, I want the stakes to be even higher. Yeah, I want I want someone to come out of the woodwork and release like old love letters. Yes, you know. Oh my god, <laughs> I don't think no because he married his high school sweetheart. Aww. Well, that's why it would be even more scandalous if someone yeah that'd be had like, those things to say. You know, people like cheated but didn't talk about it back in the day. Yeah. You know, you get like a voicemail from a landline. Not you know? Gary. Uh, Gary. I don't know. Nick's like Gary fucks. <laughs> Gary looks like he fucks. He absolutely looks like he fucks. That looks like a guy who's like, what was his profession? Restaurateur. The restaurateur. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Which guy is- works in a restaurant and he wasn't like fucking slinging his dick around. <laughs> Come on. Give me a break. He Grow professionally up, wants yeah. and dies. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> I put my mom up for the show. I'm really disappointed that she's not going to. You did? Date. Yes. Oh, and she's how old's a catch. Mom? How old's your mom? I bet she is. She's 69. Do we have Do we have pictures of mom? <laughs> I don't think there. Why anywhere. did you say she's 69? 69. Like you're being like <laughs> just for fun, just because to be an idiot. Yeah. But they would be so cute together, and she's really funny too. And I bet. so I don't know why they didn't take her hmm. next time. Hurtful. He I really been my stepdad. <laughs> I'm really curious it. what the age range is going to be of the women. Yeah, they have to cast someone who's. 20 years younger at least and that's 51 yeah yeah wow i want someone in their early 40s at least yeah but i want her to be difficult who's there for the wrong <laughs> <reasons? laughs> it will be really the difficult. drama yes yeah, yeah. yes yeah she's well, not like, there for no the right cast reasons. one one nice one and one drama one yeah <laughs> yeah yeah what yeah. kind of dates are they gonna go on like I, hey we're gonna go that's pick out our can, <laughs> can 71 year olds bungee jump? I think so. Oh, no. Heart. Like cardiac. Heart. That's stuff. intense. Well, I mean, they, I've, I'm sure there's some who both, absolutely like a, could and would, but I feel like with the show's insurance, they would be like, uh uh-uh, uh. Nobody who's Maybe like they over all have to age. do like an EKG. Yeah. You know? I've done shows before where they make you take an e- EKG. That's before. the date. Th- that's the date. <laughs> <laughs> you passed. <laughs> we so we're going to do some blood work real quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I we do have think, the same blood type. Yeah. I'm excited. When does it? I'm trying to find when it comes out. Probably this fall. But how are they going to do that with BIP? I don't know. We've got a full slate. Oh, God, I'm exhausted already. But for Gary, I'll do it. When does BIP air? Bachelor in Paradise for anyone wondering. Oh. <laughs> <Sorry. Wow. laughs> Man, and just like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, I've watched it all, but I didn't know that abbreviation. Uh-huh. Likely air early mid-September. Okay, so it might over even. Yeah, they'll, they'll use Bachelor in Paradise to sell. Golden, Golden Bachelor. But then Bachelor starts like first week of January. I could see them. Where is it going to fit? It doesn't matter. It's going to fit. Yeah. Or they would make it maybe like a Tuesday show. But Bachelor in Paradise is on Tuesdays. Mm. Mm. These are the problems that I have. Yeah. Oh, well. We'll find out. They've got a lot going on. Hmm. A lot of. find out. Are we happy with Gary? I'm I'm happy. I'm very happy. I'm I'm excited after seeing. I wasn't really sure what to expect from this whole Golden Bachelor, but after seeing Gary, he's giving me hope. Fantasy Sweet Week? Are these people going to fuck? Are we going to watch them all make out? Oh, my God. Oh. Yes. Okay. I feel like. Do we like that, man? In I don't know. I don't know. I'm like trying not to like wet kisses. This is a stereotype, but I feel like they both they put both hands on each other's faces when older people kiss. Do you know what I mean? Because they have to aim. I think it's going to be really big. (laughs) Guided in. Can you imagine Gary going in and then missing? (laughs) It's like straight earlobe, Gary. Next Uh, time, (laughs) let's try that again. But really charming, and I think he has a hearing aid. My dad has a hearing aid, you know? It's like you, they're very discreet hearing aids, very charming, and uh, there's beauty in getting old. I think Gary's making getting older looking looking uh, graceful and nice. Yeah, yeah. totally. It's like, expanding our minds. It's interesting that they jumped straight to 70. What about, like, the 40-year-old? Like, where, what about that? Like, I wanted to see that for so long. Well, mm-hmm. they tried that with Claire. <laughs> Didn't go well. Well, no, but not everybody was. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. But that could be interesting, like a all divorced season of The Bachelor. Yeah. No, yeah. Like every single person. Truly, yeah. Maybe, maybe the senior bachelor will give us some more of a spin. Because I agree with you, man. And like, yeah, I'm like 24. You're not even. You don't know. Fifty somethings, yeah. like the divorcees, like the second chance at love bachelor kind of, you know, stuff like that. You know, where everybody has kids. Yeah. But I think that's what people kind of wanted. They when they were rooting for Michael A to potentially yes. be the bachelor. That was kind of going to be the story. That would have been great. Yeah. I would have loved that. Yeah. But maybe because I'm older now. Would have employed a like lot of babysitters. That's yeah. amazing. Do you yeah. think there's going to be like a group of 
like the widower group and then like the divorcee group and then the like singles group in the Golden Bachelor and it's going to be like clicks. Like, you know, like I could totally really? see like the widows being like, mm, yeah, I've never had a failed marriage. <laughs> you know, like throwing some real shade at like the divorcees. What kind of women are they going to get? Do you think know. you think they're going to be high drama? I just feel like at that age, there's like not you've worked through all your insecurities. Yeah. Well, it depends on the. I think you'd ages. be surprised. But you also. Uh, yeah, have you seen I Housewives? Know yeah. I know some 60 year olds that are talking some shit. So. All the Facebook moms. Yeah. <laughs> I also feel like one thing I, I feel like after spending so much time with my grandparents, it's like when so they will state their observations aloud, mm. whether it is one that you thought would be shared with the group or not. Like they're going to say how they're fe how they I, feel. I, that's that's a, true. There's that's, not going to be a lot of shadiness. They're just going to be out with it. Yeah. Well, yeah. also, the, you know, like that's a great point i think the bachelor has been around so long we've seen it even in this episode which we'll cover just like the i know how this works i know what i'm supposed to say you know i'm a best behavior say what what you want about brayden whatever the fuck but like nothing is more annoying than a bunch of mids uh <laughs> acting like they have a connection that they don't than taking out on someone who does and yeah. i think when you have this group of of people who i'm guessing aren't going to be as familiar with the show or just don't fucking care because they're old they're gonna say how they think and feel mm -hmm. and it's gonna it, be refreshing it might lead to a more interesting and authentic and more dramatic i don't know like i don't know if they're gonna be yelling at each other but i think you're gonna get some like really funny and witty observations and maybe even kind of outlandish ones yeah from from our cast right and it's also i think it's gonna be wholesome like i think it's gonna be a very uplifting season like i think there will be drama and some crazy moments but i think all in all like it's just going to be people who have like lived and seen the other like side a little bit more and have really positive things to contribute. They're going to be like, we're going to San Diego. And the women are going to be like, San Diego. <laughs> They're just going to like say out, yeah. be out about like not being that excited. Yeah, be like, Do you think that's now so the same filming, like running into the hotel room, jumping on the bed, <laughs> no. like so no. thrilled to be there. No. Um, side note, Nick. Yes. Were you hanging out with Chase Stokes and Kelsey Ballerini this weekend? Oh, briefly. OK, yeah. because briefly. Uh, I found something on Instagram. And I said to myself, is that Nick? Uh, yeah, that's me. Okay, great. Yeah. Just wanted to clear that up. Yeah, uh, we were at the um, the uh, Acqua di Gio uh, Giorgio Armani. That was perfect. No notes. On Saturday night. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Natalie and Kelsey have like struck up. Like, well, they've ran into each other at a couple of events. And so like they've gotten to know each other briefly. And so we said hi, had a really brief conversation, uh, met met chase uh i hope they're okay with me saying this but i gotta say what a lovely couple they're <laughs> great i love yeah. them i i mean we didn't hang out with them too long but in my brief interaction action of of, of i talked to uh, kelsey a little bit met chase but it, it's like you know how some couple you kind of observe them they very much like i would i'll say this it was very clear that the other person very much made the other person a priority. They were very attentive and affectionate, but like not over the top. Like a very, they seem very happy. Which oh, she deserves. Yeah. They That's seem, they, they both seem incredibly happy and very attentive and, and not in a like performative way, but like in a like, these, these people really yeah. care about each other. It was really, mm -hmm. it was very happy for them. They seem very happy. Sometimes you see people like a couple at a party and it's like, you're like white knuckling his arm. Like you're like we holding get it. You're on in to love. something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like there's something going on underneath no, the surface. No, it was just a very, like just very, they rarely care about each other. It was very sweet to see. Yeah. Oh, they look like, back to back like I know. they're about yeah. to like you know in the I movies in the finale where it's like i got your six yeah like they would have <laughs> separate conversations like but they're always very like uh like self-aware where like they're always very aware of where their partner was it's like yeah it's Aww. just which you know now and i like to do that but like very lovely couple mm, yeah cuties. they seem they seem very happy for anyone interested in their in their relationship setup I, status i hope they're okay with me saying that but yeah it was a fun time it was a fun party joe jonas good dj he was djing good really enjoyed you, his joe. set i don't know much about the craft like i don't know what makes a good dj but i, I found myself being like what a funky tune yeah. <laughs> you sound like, like that that your gary. Gary. i sound like gary yeah, yeah. I, I really I, I wanted i wanted to be like hey joe do you have like a playlist on spotify i can follow was it songs that you knew yeah i mean they were just like good remixes and like mm. i just it was just a. Uh, I really, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Shout out. Love. Uh, Lala and uh, Katie were there. Oh, yeah, great. Of them. Rachel. They're up and filming. Uh, Raquel they are. is nope. now Rachel. It's Rachel now. I know. Rachel. Raquel is now Rachel. She's officially left the mental health facility. Um, and she will now go by her original name, Rachel. 
Uh, a source told ET after months of therapy, Rachel decided she wanted to go by her government name moving Rachel? forward. And a source also confirms that Levis has checked out of the meadows in Arizona after spending two months at the mental health facility. Rachel is now spending time with people close to her. Good for she her. is also negotiating her contract. Despite rumors that she'd officially signed on to another season of Vanderpump Rules, TMZ reports that Raquel, Rachel, is still in contract negotiations with Bravo over her return to the show. According to Page Six, Rachel wants more money. Quote, she wants to get as much money as she possibly can, so she is playing hardball, a source explained, adding that the Vanderpump Rules cast are going on a trip to Lake Tahoe next week, and the hope is that Rachel and Bravo will have reached a deal and she will appear. Mm. As the source put it, for the right price, she'll be there. Wow. Well, I heard from, I can't really say whether it's a reliable source or not, but it is a source that, that would know. And they, they said, as of yesterday, that they weren't sure if, if Rachel was back on yet. Which caught me by surprise, but that, uh, that would confirm what I'm hearing uh there i i you know the rate the taking name rachel back love that she sounds like she's really put herself in you know immersed herself into therapy so i hope that's going what do we th i hope that's going well what do we think about um her playing hardball i mean like why why shouldn't she i mean it, it, totally. listen, it comes across as a bit well you can make the argument that if she was truly sorry and remorseful for what she did that it would just feel dirty to profit off of said infidelity and demand to be maybe the highest paid cast member. Like you are insisting that you be rewarded for your bad behavior. You, you could argue that. Our, like everybody else gets the brand deals. Like she got, she got the opposite of brand deals. Like she would use a product and everyone would be like, no. Yeah. If I'm her, I would get every cent I could. I feel like a, a big part, there was obviously a lot going on with the decision to be involved with Tom the way she was. But I feel like a big part of it was like her not standing up for herself. So the fact that she is like, I'm here to advocate for myself and know my yeah. worth could be a step in the right direction. Also, like if she does come on, she knows she's going to be crucified. Oh, yeah, it's like yeah. hazard pay. It's like, yeah, it's like <laughs> truly. Yes. I mean, I've, I'm her lawyer. I'm, you that, are an yeah. underwater welder. I'm Raquel on yeah. Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. Like, that everyone, she, me. she knows that as soon as she steps in, it's going to be hell. Also, the way they're like, she might appear. Like someone's going to open their closet when they get to the Airbnb. <laughs> Welcome She's gonna to like, Lake Tahoe. <laughs> and in I mean, this closet. It's kind of fucked up, but like Tom... <laughs> Tom and Raquel are the reason they got a nominated for an Emmy. Like, I don't think they, like, deserve, like, applause and praise or credit, but just kind of technically, the show's been around for nine other seasons. They didn't sniff an Emmy before this happened. Yeah. Well, I think the whole, but I think you can also say, like, the reaction, though, of Ariana. Yeah, yeah, it was a perfect storm. And, you know, obviously, like, Sheena in the last scene, like, brilliant performance. I get that, but. It still doesn't happen unless. Well, like we were talking about with Harry and Meghan, you know, that's just that got as many views as this season did. But I feel like what they did with that documentary docu series wasn't as great. I mean, it was a great last few episodes. You know, they were given a gift and they definitely, you know, put a bow on it. They did a great job. Yeah, they, everyone rose to the occasion. Yeah, yeah. So to speak. Do we think like the Lala's and the Katie's are going to call her Rachel? I don't. I feel like they were using it as a well, dig for a while, but now that she's kind of reclaiming it, will they do the opposite? My two cents, like, you got to move on at, w at some point. And I think they got close to that point at the finale where you just become the bully. For, first of all, Katie is the least problematic of the group. You know, even at the reunion, she, she had a couple like comments, but she wasn't beating anyone down. And I get why Lala, you know, we, we've covered this already. But at this point, I think it's just going to come across as bullying if, if, if they keep going. Raquel has spent two months in a mental health facility. I think you got to give her a chance. You got to give her a chance to see what kind of growth and what kind of like self work she's done. And honestly, I think Lala will do that, right? Like Lala has preached about having made mistakes in the past and doing the work and, and being better for it on the other side. So, I think she owes it to Rachel to give her a shot and see if the work she's put in has actually made an impact. Otherwise, if, if she comes in and they start just like, oh, you know what? 
Raquel now because you want to be called Rachel, they're going to look like fucking bullies. Yeah. It, the question is just like, how do you make Raquel's presence like justified? Because I feel like in general, it's a, a lot of like, why are Rachel? you here? Yeah. How do you make Rachel's like, what is her in with this group? If she's going to show up, because obviously no one wants anything to do with her. And so I feel like with a lot of their points, they'd just be like, you shouldn't be here right now. You have no right to be here. So that's yeah. like kind of the question is, how are they going to frame it as Rachel being like inserted into the drama? I mean, they're, everyone knows it's a show. Like, did you, anyone really believe that like when Sheena was getting married in Mexico, that Katie was there for any other reason other than they had to film a TV show? That's a good point. She was on a vacation, Nick. Yeah. She was on a vacation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like <laughs> Rachel will be on her like post mental health therapy vacation and coincidentally just find herself in the same hotel as like nine other people who wish her just nothing but suffering and pain <laughs> <laughs> so that that'll be the storyline oh well i hope she gets her bag this episode is brought to you by iq bar now get 20 percent off every iq bar product plus free shipping when you text files f-i-l-e-s to 64,000. I just I'm happy that I found IQ bar. I think it's a really good product. I tried so many granola bars looking for ones that ticked all the boxes. What boxes you may, may ask? I'm looking for something that has like protein, something that's going to like keep me fueled and ready to go through workouts. I don't want something that has too much sugar. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't want a, like a health bar that tastes like I am making cement in my mouth. Like sure, there might be other health bars on the market that have like labels that you like. But none of them taste as good as IQ Bar. Seven mouth-watering flavors like toasted coconut chip, almond butter chip, peanut butter chip, my favorite, and banana nut. You will not believe how great they taste, especially considering they have next to no sugar or net carbs. Finally, there is a healthy bar out there that you can eat, enjoy, and know that you're getting proper nutrients. It's so hard being busy and trying to eat right. It, it is one of, it's other, next to drinking enough water, like being on the go and eating healthy is just a difficult thing. And let IQ Bar save your day. Now get 20% off all IQ Bar products plus free shipping. To get your 20% off, just text FILES, F-I-L-E-S, to 64000. Get your discount. That's right. Text FILES, F-I-L-E-S, to 64000. That's FILES, F-I-L-E-S, to 64000. Message and data rates may apply. See terms for detail. I was in New York this past week, and it really is true what they say. It's the humidity that gets you. It's a um, dirty heat in New York City. It's a nasty you heat. You feel it on your and body. And it's a Humid. stinky heat. Yeah. Like, yeah. you walk down to the subway and you smell every odor known to man. Nothing came in more clutch than Lumi because I was like, it's a wet, dark, icky place down here. It's not just my armpits that could use some deodorant. You some... have a lot of sweaty places in your body. Yes. But more importantly, it is truly so clutch. It has no harmful ingredients. So even in your most sensitive era areas, you can put it on without feeling any kind of concern about chemicals or any bad reactions from your bodies. And it just keeps you feeling fresh and OK and non-stinky. Lumi keeping you fresh on the go. Is that their tagline? It should be. Aluminum free. We love that. Baking soda free. We love that. And Parabound free. We love that even more. pH balance for safe use below the belt. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. I only want to turn to the experts when it comes for any kind of health stuff. That is why I am so glad Lumi is founded by an OBGYN who really knows what she's talking about. She made a pH balanced product that is 100% safe and suitable for all the bits. As a special offer for our listeners, New customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code V-I-A-L-L at LumiDeodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit Lumi.com and you code V-I-A-L-L, that is L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com, code V-I-A-L-L. Speaking of the, this weekend, uh, do you guys, are, are you guys kind of grossed out easily? Manon, how about you? Depends on like about what blood or are you guys pimple? Or... Who's who's a pimple popper in this in this room? Like you're feeling like just you raised your hand. <laughs> are you gonna show us something? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Lift your shirt. <laughs> Am I the only one? That's like I'll do it if I have like if it's one on but my face. On do you mean the, on somebody else? I or on find yourself? that there are two people in this world: people who love a good pimple pop, and people who don't. 
And if like, especially in a couple, like someone likes to pop their partner's pimples. Or, Aren't you or, not or, supposed to do that though? For yeah. Scarring? Also, I'm I don't sure, know if Natalie's yeah, thrilled by this because I went to the bathroom with her not last week. The point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I went. To, I went to the bathroom with her last. Week. <laughs> she was just like she was getting annoyed at her skin, and she was like, "And it doesn't help that Nick's always like, I'll pop it, I'll pop it." <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I have a needle no, in a the chi- night. <laughs> I'm a child. Yeah. No, totally. Anyway, so I had uh, a benign cyst on my head. <laughs> Where? Okay. <laughs> it's in my. Uh, oh, I remember this. Yeah, I had to go get Yay. it removed. Right. Yeah. It was a cyst or whatever. I wasn't really worried about it. You know, like it just, you know. But they did some tests on it. Everything's fine. And when they took it out, they're like, oh, we didn't like we didn't get all of it, you know, but like it might or may not grow back. But uh, a couple weeks later, it like seemed to like reemerge, but it also seemed to like be filled with like fluid and stuff. And then it like got real big when I was like doing a lot of physical activity for a period of time. And then it shrunk back down. And then I went back to the doctor. and I said, hey, man, like the fucking this is back. Like, can we try to get all of it? And he's like, well, let's give it a few months and like, let's make sure that we can get all of it. This, I don't know. Whatever. I. By the way, if you're listening, I don't need you guys to send me all your like medical advice. <laughs> I I'm I'm good. I'm gonna I've been talking to my medical health professionals. Anyways, we're on our way to the Giorgio Armani Acqua di Gio party, mm-hmm. in which we, you know, had a lovely chat with Kelsey and Chase. And Nally was driving. Per usual. Per usual. Also, like she just gets motion sickness pretty easily. Part that's part, you know, not to justify it, but like she was driving and I I, I was a little and you know loose and <laughs> and uh and all of a sudden like I'm, I'm i'm touching my my cyst and then i felt a little fluid mm. i was like is, did i have like moisture in the in my hair that i didn't like that caught like a pocket and then i i look and it, it's nighttime and it was like my <laughs> my cyst was leaking oh and then i kind of looked at it and like applied some pressure and then what came out was well a lot and wow what color yeah i have a picture no. show us white who put it wants, up there who wants white to see yellow. It. it's yellow I, i'll see it i would all i would like to see how it. is the smell I, no when, it doesn't smell like anything interesting it, it came out pretty white pretty non like it didn't look infected for uh-huh. anyone concerned but it came out like i thought it was the rest of the cyst it it looked like something that was hard i really didn't know i was just like holy shit I don't like I have a spike coming out of the top of my head. We pulled over, immediately called Nally's doctor. So she works for a, a plastic surgeon. Mm. It's like nine o'clock at night. We're like, holy shit, this is what's going on. What do we do? Right. You know, we're on the way to this party. My 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 <laughs> brain is bleeding, basically. I don't know. I have something coming out of it. He's just like, just get the fluid out, pull over. So we pulled we went to a CVS. I got sterile gloves, sterile cotton balls, and hydrogen peroxide and neosporin. And basically, it was just hard pus. It was, okay. and, and we cleaned it out. Did it you was, love it a little bit? Yes. 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 Yeah. The, the, the moral of the story is like, this was kind of, I was kind of in heaven. I was kind of like thriving. How was she? I mean, Nally works in surgery. So like she, she's, she's not disgusting and infatuated like I am. She's just more meh, whatever about it. Do you want to see it? Yeah. Huh. Pass it around. Oh. Puss, it's like puss, a teacher puss. show and tell. It was like a yeah. giant. I thought it was going to be like a video of it coming out. Oh, no. It's just a photo. <laughs> just draining on your I thought it was going to be huge for some reason. Did I oversell it? No. No. Oh. Just, oh. Oh. You just said pimple popper and I just started picturing it. It just was real. It's yeah. been draining ever since. My. I don't see anything on your head now. Like, well, it's underneath, but mm-hmm. I, yeah, I've been, Obviously, I've been a, keeping it real clean. I like to zoom out and see Nick's eyes looking into the camera. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Allie! <laughs> uh, it looks like a grape. It's really gross. So did you patch it up for the party or is it in well, your hair? I mean, I couldn't like stitch it up or put yeah. like a bandaid in it. So mm-hmm. I, I cleaned it up, yeah. applied, we were like tw- we were like 25 minutes out, so I applied pressure to it. And then I put some neosporin on it and brought a couple cotton balls with me. Because, yeah, I had a couple times that I like tapped my <laughs> head. It was, my, at this party, my head was bleeding. Yeah. Basically. I feel like, you know, obviously menstruation, there's a lot of other stuff going on. But you did have the experience of being like, I might leak. <laughs> yeah. Did you pop it <laughs> Yes, I finally felt like a woman. No. <laughs> So I feel like if you hit yourself, then it pops. Is that what uh, happened? Well, it had basically, the most of it had popped. So mm. it was at this point, it was just like a little leakage. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Great. But, yeah. <laughs> Yum. How charming. Well, that was exhilarating. Thank you. Yay. I, anyways, so it was, uh, for any pimple poppers out there, it was truly 
It was your Super Bowl. <laughs> it kind of was. It, it kind of was. One final note. One final note. Before we get into this episode. Do you guys know that Sean McLaughlin's father has been kind of in like <gasps> scandal for years? Yes. Sean on this season. Sean who got a Sean. rose at the end of this episode. Sean, oh. uh, Allie's kindred child spirit, five head. Mm, Ken, uh, Ken winner. Ken. Yes. Allie grew into the, fo- the forehead. Double denim. Jean jacket. Yeah. 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 yeah I did this see one. this. What? <laughs> this man. <laughs> this man right here. He smiles like this. Twinsies. Yep. Yeah. So what he's, it turns out like Sean's dad's kind of a yes. bad dude. So his father is Steve McLaughlin, who was a county executive in New York. He assumed the office in 2018. He previously worked as a pilot and a banker. He was then elected oh to New God. York State Assembly in 2010. Um, and represented the 107th district from 2011 to 2017. In 2017, at the height of the Me Too movement, the Wall Street Journal reported that Steve was censured by the New York State Assembly's Ethics Committee for violating the sexual harassment policy. The outlet claimed that Steve asked a female staff member to send him nude photos, but he denied the allegations. In December of 2021, Steve was indicted for two felony counts, including grand larceny in the third degree, The politician was accused of withdrawing $5,000 from his campaign fund in November of 2017 to pay off personal debts. But on January 25th, 2023, McLaughlin was acquitted of the felony counts by a jury after one hour of deliberations. First of all, can we just say the triple crown of douchebag jobs, politician, banker and pilot Pilot. and any one of those. If you do one of those jobs, I'm sure there's a totally solid chance you are a great person. But to do all three of those is the most incriminating resume I've ever heard in my life. Steve likes to fuck. He asked for nudes. He was embezzling campaign funds. (laughs) Yeah. What else? Two felony accounts, including grand larceny of the third degree. I don't know what the second one was. He's withdrawing five thousand dollars. Yeah. So it begs the question. You know, like, listen, there's a lot of bad parents out there. Just the sins of the father, as they say, aren't necessarily the sins of the the kid. This is a show where part of the the process is to take your lead and insert them in four families Uh-oh. for hometowns. We're down to six. What? I know. This is a tru- What's this going is, on? It's a truncated season. We're not getting the same amount of episodes, clearly. So I'm guessing this is the last week before hometown. So Sean is one episode away from introducing Charity to this man, to this man who that's why he seems sketch out. I don't know if you noticed that last episode. He seemed a little like worried about hometowns, but guy, acted like it was about, the guy, you know, just like vulnerability. the but. guy who asked for nudes. <laughs> But he was very adamant. McLaughlin said, I didn't do that. I never revealed a thing. They have no proof that I did because I did not. It appears to be a political hit. Who's been the most vocal person in the assembly the past seven years? That's me. Who stood up for their constituents like no one else? Me. So we prove my innocence and then they go back and take another bite at the apple and they say, we couldn't nail them on sexual harassment. So let's get them on something else. The lady doth protest too much. <laughs> That's a crazy That's, response. Yeah. <laughs> that is a bananas response. <laughs> <laughs> bananas <down. laughs> uh, I know someone in, in, who's pretty heavily involved in New York politics and I asked them about him. They said, pretty shady dude. Okay, so he's either yeah. going to be like his dad. Or he's going to go the opposite way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? That's what happens usually. Right? Yeah. Child, yeah. Children. I'm not seeing opposite. He lives in Florida. <laughs> not with those eyebrows? Yeah. He went, he went from New... He's in Florida. Yeah. He's doing a Ken doll. I don't know. I could see opposite. I, the he cashmere. Seemed, when he said, it's cashmere. Yeah. I was like, that yeah. part was funny. <laughs> a little bit harrowing, though. <laughs> can I... For, before we get to The Bachelor, can I complain about movies for a second? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't make movies like they used to. I know. I agree. I saw this thing, you know, like now every movie now is like Mission Impossible 32, you know, like, and listen, I love a good Mission Impossible. It was really good. I saw it Have yesterday. Seen, it was yeah. freaking amazing. Okay. <laughs> I, but the other ones I were like, meh, but this I, one was I've actually enjoyed, very entertaining. I've enjoyed most of them. Yes. And then like, I've also liked the Marvel movies, but I, I found this page on, on Twitter that I, as a kid, one thing about me that I always really liked to do, I don't know why, but I always like to like look up box office numbers mm. as a kid i'd be like nine years old and like who's trending number one at the box office I was like i don't i don't i just really liked it for some reason anyways um uh, there's this page on twitter that talks about like in like like they'll bring up random years and talk about the, the number one at the box office for a certain year 1994 mm, titanic oh. no best friend's wedding <laughs> sorry go <laughs> it's ahead okay. it's okay 1994 i just want to lit 
picked a list of movies that crushed it. Number 10, 1994, Pulp Fiction. Number 10. Wow. Pulp Fiction. One of my favorite movies of all time. Number nine was Interview with a Vampire with Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. Good movie. Kristen Pulp, Dunst. I think Pulp Fiction. Tr Kristen Dunst is a little vampire. Or Absolutely. Kirsten. 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 Sorry. Apologies. Yeah, well. Thank you. Thank you, Manon. <laughs> I said uh, it first. I said her name, Kristen. Uh, number eight, Four Weddings and a Funeral with oh, Hugh Grant to Annie McDowell. So good. That was number eight. Number seven was Dumb and Dumber. Number seven, a class, one, one of the best comedies of all time. Pulp Fiction, Dumb and Dumber, same year. Six, Speed. Keanu Reeves. Speed was a massive blockbuster. Just an absolute gem of a movie. Yeah, Derek I is love that movie. grinning. Yeah. <laughs> number ear to ear. Number five was The Mask, also oh with Jim Carrey. Gosh. The introduction. When, that's when we were in introduced to Cameron Diaz. That was her big. In that red dress. Oh my God! Is a like a middle schooler. I. Yeah, <laughs> truly. I was like, oh, okay, I'm in love and with I women. I want it to be <laughs> like, right now. Like, I know these kids might be saying I'm gay, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's when I decided Literally. to become Jim Carrey. Uh, number four, The Flintstones. Oh, you know, okay. I guess family film. O'Donnell. Everyone can see it. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, three True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Awesome mm -hmm. movie. Have you seen True Lies? I haven't, I haven't seen, seen a single one of these. I'm oh, over these, these are all, all phenomenal movies. I've True Lies. Arnold it, I have a character flaw where I haven't seen most movies. Oh, it's like, honestly, if, you, if, if, if none of these movies are ringing a bell for you, do yourself a favor and like go, go and watch them. They're great. True Lies. Arnold Schwarzenegger plays like some like CIA spy and Jamie Lee Curtis is his wife who's like bored with her life because he, she thinks he's like an accountant or something. And it, it's just, it's funny and it's fun. It's just a great movie. Number two, Forrest Gump. Oh my gosh. And Surely. No, really? I, I you thought... haven't seen Forrest Gump? No. It's Natalie's favorite movie. Uh, and number one, The Lion King. That's my all time Surely. favorite Disney movie. In the no, entire no, twice. no. And the, the honorable okay. mention, uh, Clear and Present Danger here is from four greats. Uh, Stargate was pretty good. Legends of the Fall with Tom Cruise. The Client, Brad Frankenstein, The Junior. Uh, also, Shawshank Redemption. Oh my gosh. Uh, the Paper, Natural Born Killers, uh, The Shadow, The Crow with uh, Bruce Lee's son who died while filming. Oh my gosh. Act I mean, there's just like you could so many good movies in that one year. And I can't like name any movies that they come out this year that it's just like, it's always some, some Marvel bullshit. Yeah, all these stand the test of time. You could watch them today and be like, um, this is brilliant. Whereas like the last 10, 20 years, I'm it, like, wh what's If it's not I'm a blockbuster remake, yeah. it's all fucking remakes and like, and like some good foreign films, like Parasite rocked. That oh was yeah, good. Parasite. That but like good. apart, yeah, it's like been a drought. I saw. Do you know the new Dungeons and Dragons movie? My boyfriend was like, every like. Someone he was, was watching the plane. Is that with Chris Pine? Yeah, he was really, and I was like, I don't want to watch. It. Like, I don't know why I was being very resistant. And then he, the thing that sold me, he was like, it's like the Princess Bride. Like he was like, it is a really? movie, movie. It is so good, really? you guys. It is awesome. It is like a wow. movie, movie, movie. It's like The Princess Bride. I'm I, also wondering, is it because we were younger and like we were so impressionable then that everything's amazing when you're that age and then it just sticks with you like music as well. And so it's like the people that are like five now watching Dungeons and Dragons or whatever are going to remember that for then like later. I've always thought about that. Like, hmm. is it actually incredible or is it because it imprinted on us when we were so alive and like everything's amazing because we're five and seven but you weren't yeah. a dungeon and dragons fan and you liked it well i th the game I, my brother and dad would play on family vacations oh, so and i was so annoyed i was like are uh, you kidding me <laughs> i want everyone to play monopoly so that way we can get way too competitive and storm away and so i had like a low level resentment vaguely but a lot of my friends like i don't know i'm i'm nerdy all my friends are nerdy so like a lot of dungeons and dragons community members in my friend groups okay Need a break from reality? Ever feel like you just want to escape? Well, cheer up, Buttercup, because Paramount Plus has your great reality escape. Escape to new seasons of the biggest competition shows out there like Survivor, Big Brother, and the Challenge World Championship with the boldest personalities from the family Stallone to RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars and Queen of the Universe and the wildest drama like Are You the One? Plus hundreds of previous seasons all streaming at your fingertips. See, reality ain't so bad. Your great reality escape, Paramount Plus. Stream now. Hey, all you dog lovers out there who want to make sure that your wonderful furry buddies are getting their best diet possible so they can be with you as long as they possibly can, Sundays is making high quality dog food that is affordable. Sundays cost 40% less than other healthy dog food brands because Sundays doesn't waste money 
shipping frozen packages. Ain't that the truth? Instead, they spend on what matters, sourcing the best all-natural ingredients for your pup. Sundays is shelf-stable. Every order ships right to your door, so you'll never worry about running out of dog food again. Sundays contains 90% meat, 10% vegetables, and 0% synthetic nutrients. Besides USDA beef and all-natural chicken, you'll find digestive aids like pumpkin and ginger, plus disease-fighting antioxidants. Dog parents report noticeable health improvements in their pumps, including softer fur, fresher breath, better poops, and more energy. Tell you what, Jeff is a bit of a picky eater, but he loves his Sundays. And honestly, just it's just if you love your dog, their diet matters and feel good about giving your dog the high quality food like Sundays has to offer. We worked out a special deal for our dog loving listeners. Get 35% off your first order of Sundays. Go to sundays 4 slash V-I-A-L-L and use code V-I-A-L-L at checkout. That's S-U-N-D-A-Y-S-F-O-R-D-O-G-S dot com, sundays 4 dogscom forward slash V-I-A-L-L. Upgrade your pup to Sundays and feel good about the food you feed your dog. All right. We're, it's all right. It's basher time. It's basher at time. Episode four. I didn't think they'd make me like Brayden. I don't, I don't was, like Brayden. I like him too. Well, I don't hate him. I got to be honest from the beginning. Th- I just, nothing <laughs> irritates me more watching this show every season, like I said earlier in the episode, than a bunch of fucking mids, a bunch of people who don't have a shot, who, who have no connection with the lead, whine about the time they're not getting, and then blame people who get time thinking that it's not charity making these decisions. Like a bunch of guys who probably claim to be progressive and like care for charity. And they're kind of, what are they playing? What are they, what's the, what's the term? The kind of savior, the guy. White knight? Like a savior complex? Yeah. yeah. They're just like, I'm, I'm going to pro- fucking, I, 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 I'm so fucking sick of Aaron. Shut the fuck up, Aaron. I am too. You're not her fucking savior. You're not her hero. You're not there to protect her. You weren't casted to make sure that charity is okay. It's not your fucking job. She's fine. She's able to take care of herself. Shut the fuck up and let things play out. Amen. And I hated that Brayden made so much fucking sense when talking because nevertheless, he is still like most certainly a fuck boy who isn't ready to settle down who wouldn't give charity straight answers and like should have gone home. He seems pretty self-aware though. He's kind of just like, yeah. he, when he's describing himself, he's like, yeah, I think I opened my mouth too much and I need to just be quiet. And then it cuts to like next week, they all have the same exact concerns that Brayden has. They're mm-hmm. like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. I don't know if I, you know, it's like, he just says what he thinks he's out loud because he's 24. He, to me, he's harmless. And I actually like really liked him when he first got on the show. I, was, I mean, I didn't he didn't need the earrings and the scarf, but like I liked his he seemed like he was genuinely joyful in the world. And that bothered the people that weren't. Yes, totally. He didn't take himself that seriously. And like the show, like that's what I find always annoying about the show. They like to punish people who kind of like what we talked about earlier. It's just like, how dare you question this? And, and how dare you question the sincerity of The Bachelor? And because you even question the possibility that people, we're going to crucify you. We're going to label you something that you're not. And we're going to mob mentality. Because you're at the top. And, and we're we going to bring you down. you down with these kind of loose accusations and, and make it more meaningful and sound more evil than it actually is. And at the end of the day, you just like aren't buying into the collective you know, what we all agree that we're going to say, which is, oh, God, I'm, I'm, fall- I'm already falling in love. And like, this process is working for me. And like, oh my God, my connection with Charity is like stronger than I can imagine. Meanwhile, you've spent six fucking minutes with her. She clearly doesn't like you. If she wanted to spend more time with you, she would. The reason you're not getting time is not because of Brayden. It's because Charity doesn't know your name. Well, it's also because Aaron keeps talking about it and it's like he's he's bringing it to the surface. And it's I, I'm just, I agree with Brayden where he's like, you got insecure and you're like trying to put me there when i don't belong here like just do stay in your lane dude everyone needs to just stay in their lane and it is easy to be like how dare you like yeah what you said 
How dare you uh, question this process? Yeah, easy for you to commit when you're not even involved yet. Like Brayden, now that he actually had a connection, he's like, oh, no, I don't want to actually hurt this person. Yeah. So he's just thinking about it a lot more than the other people are. 100 percent. As someone who's been in that world, like getting any amount of actual real time f does. F it is magnified. It does feel like so much more. So it makes sense why Brayden feels like his connection with charity actually has some substance. And while he's comparing it to the Sean's of the world where it's like, you, you haven't even talked to her. You don't know anything about her. And you're talking to her like, sh like you're in a 10 year, you're talking about her. As if like she's a, the mother of your children. You're in a and 10 you need year to relationship. Her. Yeah. And it's just like, what the, you guys are insane. You all sound fucking yeah. brainwashed and fucking. Yeah. He's like, you guys all drink the Kool-Aid. I'm just drinking a pint of beer yeah. <laughs> constantly. When Brayden said that Sean looked like Prince Charming from Shrek, I was oh like, my God. that's the most accurate. I like, yeah. And then thing that's <laughs> ever been said. It was one of those things where I was like, is this the most mature way of engaging with the world? No. Is seeing you do a fake butt chin talking shit about him like better than like you being like, yeah, I am a morally But they're talking person. shit about Brayden too. He was right. on the Girl Scout date when they're like, who's the most intelligent? Not Brayden. They like, said they'd eat him. It's all okay they because him. they all say it. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, you're bullying, you're bullying him. You're not any better. Like that to me, as a person, that would feel really hard to have every guy <laughs> just like come down on you. Yeah. I'd be like, I would eat you. <laughs> <laughs> really no, I, when you think about he it he took it in stride i like, mean I'm he's pretty said, endearing honestly like he's pretty authentically him and i do appreciate that about him he's not trying yeah. to like be liked or like be like in the group he's just like doing his thing and i'm I, I don't want anyone to taint him i don't want anyone to try to rob his joy the only thing he has going against him is that he is too young for this process yes. he's in no position i mean we don't know him but from what we're seeing it seems like he's in no position to settle down anytime soon. He's a fun-loving, good-looking fuckboy who is just going to have some fun probably for the next four years dating. And hopefully he is compassionate with the feelings of the people he dates. But nevertheless, he's probably not ready to get engaged in eight or nine weeks. And credit to him to have that self-awareness. Yes, you can criticize him for like, why'd you show up? I mean, he was given an, a, a fucking opportunity. But yes, he's willing to be more honest than all these other guys. He at least has the guts to say, I don't know. I mean, technically, all these other fucking guys are just love bombing yes. motherfuckers. You don't even know her yet. You don't even know her who are willing to say whatever they think Charity wants to say to, to get him to leave. And Brayden left on his own. He was like, you know what? I don't think this process is for me. He didn't wait for Charity to send him home. And I love how Charity pretended to the guys as if it was her decision. Yeah. <laughs> I, all while being co so completely rattled. It's like, I just, it's just, I'm just so confident about this decision. I'm like, you are. No, you're not. Confident. You are just spiraling, Charity. Charity loves a fuck. She boy. was still upset. You could tell that she had that little fire in her where she's like, okay, yeah, no, I know I didn't yeah, do anything no, wrong. Fine. Yeah, no. It's yeah. Fine. Yeah. No, it's like, yeah. no, it wasn't you. I just wanted you to know it wasn't you. She's like, I know. Yeah. I know it wasn't. <laughs> 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 she's a fuckboy magnet i mean she seems aware of it too she's like this is an old pattern uh, yeah but it's hard the body just remembers right the body's like well no, this is familiar so i want to go to it and this is to me like this is love because this is what i know love to be but i know her soul wants to go this way and try to get a new experience she's but she's probably still thinking about well, Brayden. i think her her date with xavier which by the way I apologize xavier i've been pronouncing it xavier i think her date with xavier kind of highlighted that mm -hmm. right because I loved that voiceover that we, you know, kind of hearing Charity's inner monologue of, he reminds me of my ex, he's complimenting my, me, like he's saying all these things, but like, I'm, I'm projecting this. I'm blaming him. Yeah. He's not even doing anything. He's just trying to be nice. Like I loved hearing all that because hearing Charity kind of have that inner monologue, that self-awareness of. You know, we talk about like the spark on this show all the time. Like, hey, the spark, and it's not exactly what you, it's on. It's not as all cracked up as it is. Not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, thank you. And here Xavier is giving her the spark. This, I feel, it's like charity, you could tell, wanted to like Xavier. Like she was like to say something that makes me think that you're amazing. And like, yes, just waiting. And she, she wanted to eat up whatever he was serving. But she had the self-awareness to know that that was dangerous for her. Yes. And the fact that she wanted to sit down and still question him and his past relationships does show like that growth of, of her getting out of this just generally attracted to very good looking 
potential fuckboys. And then what? He gave the story that actually kind of proved like, okay, there's something there yeah. that's not just my old feelings of he's attractive and he's saying all the right things. Although that being said, I, I like the other guy. What? Uh, Don't. Yes. Don't. You know, I, I like their connection. I there's feel bad that... for Doton because Doton, he is pitching a perfect game. He is doing He's great. everything right. Yeah. He's so endearing and he doesn't stand a fucking chance to Xavier. You think J so? J it's over. It's over. What? It's absolutely over. I think if she's smart, she's going to go for Doton. Not smart, but I think if she's thinking about the long, like I think he'll in be a better fairness, match in long jeopardy. I, I will say this, having, in fairness to charity, this is how this shit works on this show. Because you, no matter whether it's 12 weeks or in this case, it seems like Charity's getting less time than most leads. I think they've shortened her. Mm. They're, they're, giving her they're giving her less episodes. I'm assuming it took less than nine weeks to film. And at the end of the day, no matter how, like, she's never going to get to know any of these guys. Doesn't matter how much time she gets with any of them. She will only get to know the very tip of the iceberg of any of these men. But she can trust her eyes. And her eyes tell her, that she wants to fuck Xavier the most. Mm. And you do, like you just, you, you can't discount your physical attraction, the natural, like just chemistry, the intangible, and you hope for the best on the other stuff. You try your best to qualify them and be like, you know, is this person crazy? Do they have any like glaring red flags? But other than that, you're just like, I'm not gonna know anyone, so I'm gonna pick the person ultimately that I'm the most physically attracted to who seems the most normal. And at the end of the day, that's Xavier. And he also seems like, I mean, fuck, fucking PhD. He is studying, like trying to fight MS, of which his mom suffers for. He knits. He knits. He's he, an incredible dresser. Absolutely incredible dresser. That sweater, French kiss. I want to go shopping with Xavier. Like, Did you say French kiss? Chef's kiss. I don't know. Fuck. Sorry. I, don't know. Sorry, I just processed that. I want to French, French kiss. Like French Xavier. kiss. She seems I mean, a lot kind of. Yeah. Yeah. She's like a level of exactly. French chef's kiss. Yeah. I feel like French, she has a lot of yeah. chemistry with Joey. Joey's just there to be the next bachelor. You think? And they're doing a good job. And they're doing a good what job. What a dream about. Yeah. yeah. It's so obvious safe. who her are, who are top three are. I don't know. I... I was wrong about uh, Joey Harrington, whatever his fucking name John. was. John. John. I got over John after he just bl absolutely blamed Brayden for his lack of chemistry with Charity. He's like, how could you do that to another man? It's like, what the fuck? Again, I, I remind the audience every season. So the scene of which you had, what's his name? John. John, sure. Uh, <laughs> He's like, sure. Joey Harrington. <laughs> whatever. He's making out with Charity, right? And then you see fucking Brayden just standing there. So just a little <laughs> behind the scenes for you all. This is what I'm 99.99999% sure what happened. Brayden goes home in the limo. And then you saw in his exit, he's like, you know, I just felt like, oh, just like something left unsaid. He goes back to his hotel room. They're sitting in this compound, right? No one leaves the next fucking, like, immediately. They might leave the next day or the next two days. They have to book a flight, whatever the fuck. In that time period, a producer went up to him and said, hey, man, I don't know. It just felt like. Yeah. It just felt like you had more to say, man. Like, do, if we got you another time with charity, would would you want to do it? And he's probably like, fuck yeah, man. Like, I don't want to leave on a bad note. Yeah, you know? exactly. So I said, sure. And the only window they gave him was, they're like, all right, well, walk in. He had, he had no idea what was going on. He probably had no idea there's a cocktail party going on. They said, walk in, take a right, walk into that room and go talk to your girl. And he walked into a room. Well, she was already talking to John. That Making out with John. That happens ev every fucking interaction yeah, it's the starts with like he did not come up with that on his own idea and was like i'm gonna interrupt but everyone knew, interrupts piss everybody off yes everyone interrupts every conversation is interrupted by someone else the only you they just choose to show certain ones but every single one is interrupted so like brayden didn't do anything he was just given an opportunity and he said yes to it meanwhile joe john whatever the fuck your name is like she doesn't like you if she wanted to keep making out with you Oh, by the way, her reaction to seeing Brayden was phenomenal. <laughs> when it's she, like a double take. When she turned around and goes, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> like, that was incredible. She was not mad. That was so good. <laughs> she was not mad, but I honestly think that had she not gone, I think Xavier saved her from Brayden because again, like Doton, handsome, nice. He's, he's great, but he just, she loves a pretty boy. It's so obvious how I feel like 
don't know. He has. I notice he has those two ear piercings, and one of them is like on the inner lobe. And I was like, "That's he's, stylish." Listen, I think Dalton's adorable, just as attractive yeah. as the next guy. He's wonderful. He seems like he holds the space pretty well. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I felt like Xavier kind of was in her face on the bus. Like, he was he just, a little he was, too like, so close. It to came. Her. Yeah. He. It's a all weird. He's. It's just all too easy for him. Yeah. He just. He's. I feel like he's done this before. Oh yeah. He's <laughs> just very charming. It's like. He knows he's seven foot. He knows he's good looking. He knows he's a fucking PhD student. He's got charisma just like oozing out of his pores. It's like your cyst. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Xavier <laughs> is your cyst. Yeah. <laughs> but he was, I agree with you, man. And he was like almost a little invasive, a little like, and she was kind of like this. And like... I think that's what she was picking up on. It is, it is, it should be, I don't care who you are, to be one of many uh, courting the lead your bachelorette who is by all accounts a celebrity in the eyes of all the cast people at least the first couple weeks there should be like a power dynamic that the lead has over the others and when it comes to the bradens and the xaviers of the world they're like i don't know just like a cute girl you know like they think they're the prize too yes yeah and it seems so obvious flow with the show (laughs) no (laughs) and it's so obvious that you know when when she's around He's very, again, like Doton, handsome fella, just as handsome as the average. He's, he is in the 90th percentile of like the human species of like just tall, good looking, quality, smart, like he's a fucking catch. But compared to like the Xavier's, he just, it's, it's funny. It's I, not would, the same. I would choose Doton any day. Yeah. Any day over Xavier. Yeah. I just, maybe- I think he's more in his body. Oh, totally. oh, he's he's so which is attractive to me. He's oh, just yeah. like I got you. I'm not even shaky. Whereas Xavier is too. There's something like when he was answering the questions at the dinner table, she was almost answering for him, like to make sure that he said the right thing yes. so that we can stay in line with what I want you to be. I remember I like let what him are talk and when I was what watching it, I said, Charity, let him finish, yeah. which is saying something coming from me. But um, <laughs> yes, I picked up on that as well. Yeah. yeah, I was I was like, oh, she really wants to live in this fantasy, but also find out the truth. If you just let him keep going, there'll be more will be revealed, I think, with Xavier. What about the conversation that Brayden had outside on the field about she always being on? How did you feel about that? I think there's some truth to it. Yeah. There, you know, as the lead, you're, you're, it's like you have two jobs. One, film a TV show. That's actually number one. And two is to fall in love. And as far as it's like this kind of unspoken agreement between the lead and the producers of, listen, we have two things we have to do in the next whatever eight weeks. We have to film a good TV show and we want you to fall in love. And we really want both to happen. And nine times out of 10, they, they can work in unison with each other. But for a non-professional lead, so to speak, trying to do both, it's very obvious to the cast members that, and every bachelors do this, bachelorettes do it. I'm sure I was guilty of it. Everyone's guilty. It's just like, you can see them playing a role. Which is hard to fall in love with that. I feel like love comes from this, the vulnerability of me showing you both sides of the coin and where I'm scared and like, are you going to love this part of me? So it, to me, it feels like that has to happen in order for that to break through, yeah. like loving somebody. Yeah, it's just so hard because it's like you don't, if she was being like authentic, not stepping into the role at all, like when half the men were talking, she'd just be like zoning out, you know, like it's like she has to muster up this level of like false enthusiasm for it's, the people who she knows she's not going to pick. It's so and it tough. must be so hard to so like hard. turn that off around the people you like. And I do think that's why like moments when like the other week when she took Doton up to her room and like they were just hanging out, like I think it's really clear that she is making an effort to do that with cer- some of the men. I just imagine it gets like, it's really hard at the beginning when there's so many people you have to like be like, yeah. uh-huh, yeah. And what's really crazy <laughs> is that like in this environment, you know, so when she walked, John, John, who went home, she was making out pretty hard with. So logic would tell you, oh my God, she sent home the guy she was just making out with. Like, that's weird. But in reality, in this environment, it's just like, all right, I got nothing to say to you. Let's just fucking make out. Let's just <laughs> kill time by sucking face. And, see and if honestly, here. there is like, it's almost a negative. If all you are doing is kissing, that means that you both have nothing to talk about or the leads is not interested in getting to know you. So that it's like, oh, let's fucking make out. Because like, and it's the conversations that actually drive like the relationship. So, so Doton in the room having a great conversation, like really getting to know each other, things like that. But 
just making out, she hates you. I was going to ask. Yeah, so it's not Brayden's fault you went home, John. It's yeah. your, it's the fact that you just made out. And John did say like, I wanted to finish my conversation. And in my mind, I was like, you're making out. And I, yeah. a question I had was, in my mind, it's like, there's the talky portion. And then the, like, once the make out happens, la, 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 la. that's how the conversation ends or like your time with the lead. Maybe. Do you feel like that's pretty like normal like sure how do you get back to conversation just, after you've been sticking yeah your but like in each other? but they're usually something like this like she'll have connections with a handful of people and then again there's a natural chemistry so you feel like you're building a rapport with someone and some of the people are just like you know again like when i was filming i was pretty sure i was gonna pick vanessa early on but like i had a real natural chemistry with rachel because like we just vibed we had great conversations there was a mutual respect you know like it was just great to get to know each other you know and that was the bond that we had and so, but a lot of the other people, it's just like, yeah, we talked, but it was just like the dumbest conversations. Neither of us were all that interested in each other. It was just like, this is awkward. And so, yeah, I'm sure they had conversations, but it probably wasn't worthy of TV. And if it was, it would have a bunch of like awkward music over it because you could, you could feel the awkwardness between the two of just like, just not really being on the same page, which, you know, happens all the fucking time in dating, but it's much easier for all the guys especially the guys the guys are more guilty on the bachelorette i think than the bachelor of like lying to themselves like oh she's so into me it's just like oh we have such a connection it's like no yeah that one guy with the long hair that was crying what was he crying about Caleb. like her or the guys and i just okay. hope you end up with one of these guys i how about the Caleb? how about the show when they were talking about neanderthals and they panned to Caleb? <laughs> <laughs> he's like who? Oh. <laughs> Who is it? He is a handsome, <laughs> handsome man. Neanderthal. But, but also kind of looks like 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 the hottest caveman in the world. Every time I see the Chiron that says he's only 24, it's a jump scare. Oh my like, god. I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> What's going on? He looks like he could be fucking Gary's brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Him and Brayden are the same age. Isn't that so yeah. strange? Haunting. It is wild. They're like complete that, opposite that, energy that types. Bone structure. That... The bone structure of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, no disrespect to the wrestlers of Florida because Florida, I don't know them. But, but like, I felt like he was such a tender man. Oh, I yeah. felt like the emotion yeah, flowed like oh, yeah. so yeah. freely in a way where I was like, oh, Absolutely. you feel things deeply. And I don't want that to be like used they, against you. They all seem oh, lovely sweet. when they're not being fucking petty, whiny guys when they're not getting the attention they think they deserve. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Kind of random. But did we think the rainbow was CGI? Where was the rainbow again? It was after well, they went bungee out. jumping. I think so. My theory is that there was a small rainbow in the sky. Guy, and then they took other shots of Maybe. the landscape and because it was a perfect arc and there were and they always like cut to the rainbow. Well, have you very seen randomly. any rainbows that look a little janky? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Aren't they all just a. Oh, I've seen some busted rainbow. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Maybe on the East Coast. But Washington's a beautiful place. So oh, yeah. They were, I'm selling. literally thinking of Washington is a beautiful place. selling it at the beginning. It, it was like. We are in Stevenson, Washington. Like, like it was woods. Like, oh my Stevenson. god! Oh my! <laughs> wow! The Paris of the Pacific Northwest. It did yeah. look nice. Oh, it totally. Did. But it, like, it was very hyped. Yeah, extremely hyped. What about the little girls? Oh, the Girl Scouts. Uh, I, that one that like went to them. Protect I I loved them so were, much. Yeah, they were great. I feel like that was one of the moments where I really like fell in love with Charity. Was when they were like, "Come back." Stinky boys, and she's like, "Yes, stinky boys, get in here!" Like she was having fun with it, and I thought it was so cute. Do you think they were actual uh, Girl Scouts or paid actors? Paid actors. Yeah, they were. They were two. They were almost. She, that one delivering the, the lines. The first, I was like, "How does she yeah, know what to say?" The main one is on a very different pay scale with the than the other two. The other two oh are just God. featured well, extras. I mean, I don't, they were all pretty good. There was a leader. She blew it out of the park. Yeah. She oh, blew yeah, it yeah. out of the park. Guns yeah. blazing. She was definitely, but that's like saying, you know, the, the uh, lead of a movie, maybe maybe their co-star, if had given the lead, could have performed, but they just had more of a meaty role. Yeah, yeah I'm, ju I'm not saying anything. Yeah, they gave I'm her the saying they were not cast line. in the same way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the girl who did the demon voice, I love her, like, she, the clear, like not even saying hi to any of them. Yeah, like, staring them down. She's my favorite that for was, sure. That yeah, was pretty great. She seemed real. Did anyone else get anxious about them eating the food? Yes. Yes. I was like, are they going to die? die. For yeah, I was like, half fifty percent of berries kill you. I'm making up the number. Did they plant but... food? Do you think? And do we think Brayden actually found some like real beets? I think, I don't know. I don't think that this actually happened, but I kind of want to believe that the mushrooms Brayden ate were like ever so slightly psychedelic. Because he did look like a man on mushrooms. He seems for the like day. he's on psychedelics a lot. A lot. Which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> for so me. Also, Tom Sandoval, you want someone to do mushrooms with you and watch a sunrise, Brayden. They all got so mad that he wasn't wearing extra 
coats. Also, when he was like, when you he know? was saying to Aaron, like, you meet me, like, I'll fuck you up. Like, Brayden wasn't fucking around. You could tell that Brayden was like, I'm tired of your shit. And if you really want to do this, like, I'll kick the shit out of you. Yeah. And you could and you tell probably that. probably would. You probably, no, I mean, like, I'm, I don't know what Aaron's up to. Aaron, well, very tall. He's very and, threatened and, for sure. But like, I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I'd bet on the guy, I'd bet on the ex-veteran rather than whatever it is that Aaron. Especially still, if does. he still has that staff. That he found what so early doing? into the day. Oh, the staff. Big walking <laughs> you know, stick. the staff. <laughs> oh, sure. He just seems like he enjoys life and it just, Aaron, eh, I don't know. I'd, I, again, I don't mind Brayden that much at all. I'm glad he's there. He, what would the show be without him? Right. Nothing. Oh my God. I miss him already. I, know. I don't want him to leave. <laughs> was it Doton or Xavier that was like, I think it was Xavier. He's like, you know, there's more to me and I just don't want to be pigeonholed. Like, I know, like, I'm tall and an athlete. And I'm just like, yeah, and like, I'm tall and I'm athletic and I'm smart and I'm like, just and like, I'm gorgeous. And I'm gorgeous. But, but like, I just, me. just more to me. And it's yeah. like, well, I just she love... said the same thing about her too. She's like, yeah, like, I'm go like, yeah, like, I'm goofy and I'm pretty, but like, there's more. I just love it when people say that and they list off like some really great yeah. characteristics <laughs> about themselves. What more could there be? I you know, listed yeah. every like, like, characteristic. I'm just so tired of being the super successful. <laughs> smart good looking <laughs> and like emotionally like well-rounded person yeah. like this is way more to me like, like i'm what? also a little toxic. And remember i knit yeah. i knit too remember yeah. that yeah, fun fact uh the knitting is i it's unique to see that it was a i was like oh that's so a visual you think do you think she should or will pick doton at the end yeah because i think i it's think already she over should. and i think she's already decided on xavier I and think she should. This one on one was. I think what you said is like so accurate. It take, I mean, I'm I'm been with my guy for three and a half years, and I still feel like wow, there's so much I didn't know, and this is so exciting. But you're not gonna get to know that, and so she's only gonna have a limited time to really to to really see. So I think if she's looking for longevity in a guy that can really hold her, I think Doton. But I think she'll she's more excited by Xavier. I guess it's a really interesting dynamic when you which hear, will fade. I'm really enjoying Charity as the Bachelorette. She's a delight. She's so stunning. She's just, she's more stunning. vulnerable than I imagined she would be. I thought she I thought her background in psychology would would uh cause her to be a little bit more like a little holier than thou. No, no, just more more guarded and reserved and just able to kind of It's fresh. Yeah, it's refreshing to see her humanness. To like like put up a facade yeah. and like well, be not polished. Even a, not even a facade, just like have the emotional maturity to like talk herself off the ledge and not be so generous with like exposing her weaknesses. And she's been very giving in that regard. And so the dynamic between uh, Xavier and, and Doton and like Brayden, I think was kind of like a, a preview of like, again, her past. She likes pretty men, not like, not just attractive men. Cause you, you know, there's, she, she also like, likes men that are into themselves, yeah. that value themselves. Yeah. Seems like they value themselves. And she's like, I really like that. And which is attractive when a guy knows their worth and thinks they're special and is not relying on the woman to like be the thing that makes them whole. That is attractive. So I think she's not wrong in being attracted to these people. I just think she needs to protect herself. And that's what she's doing. And she's scared. And I, it, it is nice to see her humanness because you think that, oh, yeah, she, they're therapists. It's like, yeah, we can see what's better for everybody else. But then in our own lives, we're like, oh, my God, I'm a mess. Yeah. yeah. And then it's Doton, nice. you have her relationship. You know, again, it's him. You know, we, I, we talk about dating all the time, right? You go on a first date and then there's that that natural energy to want to get someone to like you. And so you get nervous. And what do you do? You talk a lot. You're checking in on them. And and Doton, it's like that power dynamic is you have Doton like focusing on Charity, letting Charity know what he sees in her, making it very clear that he does see her to the point where Charity's like, I've n literally never had someone like court me this way to like really make me feel like they truly understand where I'm coming from. Like just like the juxtaposition to Xavier, where again you could see Charity in her more natural like dating state, where it's like I want him to like me, I want, but I want to like him. I and it's her asking a lot of questions, and but like it's almost like she's pursuing Xavier and Doton's pursuing her, and it's this kind of a very fascinating kind of yeah, it's not dilemma. quite a love. So triangle, does she feel but... deserving of being pursued? Is the question? Yeah, because that's those are two different things. If she's used to making people feel seen and making them feel validated in her job and like held, can she allow someone to hold her? 
Big question. History tells us it's just so much easier in that world to just default to what you're used to with the logic of, well, you know, they seem good. You know, like I've, I've, I've vetted them. I've asked them the appropriate questions. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go with what's the most familiar. To Will me. the hometowns make a huge difference? Does it? No. Not really? I mean, in terms of like, yeah, I, I, I don't think so. I think nine times out of 10, the lead knows the first two weeks. And if they don't know the first two weeks, like usually this is also why I think Xavier wins because I think night one, she said, Xavier's my favorite. Night one, they or first couple of weeks, they have pictures of all these, of all your suitors, and they're like, just you know, give us a general idea. Who's your favorite? Kind of just rank them for us. And part of that is just like, who do you want to spend the most time with? Who do you want to prioritize? And they kind of, you kind of remember seven, eight faces from night one, and the rest, you're like, I don't fucking know. And and that might change a little bit early on, but you usually have a top two or three that's pretty clear. And then if you really like some really hard, they will save that one-on-one date to further along. So they probably saved Xavier uh, a little bit so that, about that. so that so you late? don't fall in love too early. But usually what happens is once you get to that date, you're like, yeah, no, what I've confirmed what I already thought, which is, you know, and that, that they're my favorite. And, it, and her date with Xavier, the whole date seemed like I liked you the most from afar out of the limo you know, the tea leaves, I liked your resume the most. And it was like her trying to confirm the resume that he brought, which that seemed like the whole date where like her date with Doton was more like, hey, I don't know if you're noticing me, but let me surprise you. And I'm going to show you who I am. And I think she truly has fallen for Doton based off of what he's showing her. And she has fallen for Xavier just based off what she's seen from afar. And she's just trying to confirm what she's already naturally feeling through just natural chemistry and things like that because it felt like a lot of the xavier date or xavier date was have you cheated on a partner before was kind of like the question that was did on he her confirm mind. that he hasn't not really i really think they should just straight up ask and get the and w- just be okay with whatever the answer is yeah because charity yeah. was saying that her ex was so skillful at what they did and then xavier says that with him you will only get honesty so it felt like it was like this I've, little someone has said dance. that to me before and it was the uh, complete opposite. And I just I wonder how her body received that. Do you guys remember watching it and how you felt like when he said it? Did you believe it? Or did your body go? Yes, I trust that. Or were you like, yeah, he seemed pretty sincere. Genuine? Yeah, I think I, he's, he seems sincere. But I do remember still feeling a bit uneasy on the date because, again, I know really? we're only seeing a fraction of it. It's really edited. It's a lot longer than what we see. But she went into it being like, I don't want to be together just because we're attractive. She had all these fears like it, he reminded her of his her ex and all this other stuff. And then suddenly it was like a couple of vague questions. She's like, all good signs are pointing to Xavier. And I was like, wow, that was extremely fast for all the fears that you went into with this. The only red flags I got from was what you pointed out was on the day portion of the day on the train where it's just like. You don't need to lean in. Dude. Yeah, uh, relax back. Trust, trust your energy. Like you're too confident right now. Yeah, you're leaning in a little too much. Yeah, <laughs> but I thought on their one-on-one, I thought he was incredibly sincere and I was touched by his story and, and I was like, this guy, this is over. So you Because know. she was interrupting him a little bit, I'm trying to like, okay, read the energy from her perspective of like, why wasn't she as relaxed to just like listen to him during that? That's interesting. Hmm. Is that about her or is that about him? Because hmm. there's such a fine line of like, is this my past trauma or is it my actually picking up an in authenticity yeah, in this person? It, it is tough. And maybe yeah. a little bit of both. Yeah. yeah and know. the worst part is when it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of like, it's a past trauma that like I'm projecting onto somebody else, but then I make it true. And right. then it only reinforces the idea that like, oh, well, I need to project this on everyone. Well, yeah. because it, maybe it's, if nothing else, it's just, you know, you look at someone like Xavier and the it's too good to be true. It's just like, it's the thought of, it's like knowing in the back of your mind, if this person wanted to be a fuck boy. If this person wanted to fuck around and be disingenuous and maybe in, be unfaithful at time to times, he could totally get away with it. You know, he's smooth. He can talk his way out of problems. Like he has the power to suck, you know, and, and get away with it. And I think you, and that's scary. I think charity has a self-awareness of nothing else to recognize that even if he's done nothing wrong, you know, But he clearly has the ability, if he wanted to, to be a douchebag. Can I ask, 
why were the men walking on treadmills so slowly? That was in weird. Suits? With their I, shoes. I was so Dress confused shoes. by what was being accomplished. <laughs> uh, my guess is they were, you know, there's like a two or three hour window where it's just like, oh, it's cocktail night, whatever. We'll just everyone's, exercise. Everyone's getting in ready. Dress wear. No, they probably, it was probably like the, honestly, it was probably like the room where they all got like mic'd up or got their batteries changed or whatever. The, I don't know, fuck or whatever. And then they decided to like walk think they were off. being funny and like walk on a treadmill and someone shot that and then they edited it in they were moving so slowly like well, yeah, that treadmill was on like we don't want to sweat on the, yeah, yeah, like, yeah you don't want to get your but sweat on by the time you it see makes, charity you're gonna be a mess it makes but I, it begs the question like bold to treadmill in the first place but i just thought it was delightful imagery a nice promenade yes <laughs> i thought this was a silly episode yeah with jesse when they said his Chiron was notable Bigfoot enthusiast. I was oh like, first of all, God. Jesse Palmer's not notable <laughs> about everything with peace and love, but like he's a lovely man in a suit who does not feel like he is super out there. And then it was just like, when has this been a notable yeah. thing? It's but so- did you, you could see him in many other shots. You would have missed it if you weren't paying attention, but I was paying attention. Jesse? They gave us some Easter eggs. Yes, he, he was, I mean, I assume it was him, but you could see like a Bigfoot in the way background of multiple shots of multiple of the oh. interviews. Yeah. Well, the, the, I was taking in the Washington scenery and I noticed the it. Pr- yeah. Producers do love a good Easter egg. They, on my roller skating date, if you go back and watch it with Raven, you know, those little, uh, claw things where you like put a quarter in and you get like a stuffed animal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They put a kid in one of those. Oh my God. So if you go back and watch it, there's just a kid sitting in one of those claw machines. It's worrisome more than silly. <laughs> Yeah. Was, was the kid? I don't think they sealed it up it? in the back, but they just let a kid play it. Like it was just like a kid playing with a bunch of stuffed animals. But if you and they scan it, there's just a fucking kid. That's sitting. really funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. So they'll fuck. Yeah. They probably had Jesse in the background, almost posing as Bigfoot. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. It was playful with the Girl Scouts. Like I was like, this is what this show does well, because it's like you can't bring Girl Scouts into like love island or like all these other reality shows where it gets God, really no. messy and crazy so I, was like, clothes? I feel like bachelor's playing to their strengths right now of like i guess yeah i just wish they would just the playbook the where they get the drama it's like can't they get it from something else other than just whole like you don't want to get married in seven days you're an evil person it's just like it can't do better than that yeah i want to see them fight over rooms when they start traveling sure, oh. yeah i want to see i want room selection to be a bloodbath as it is on I feel like most group trips that you go on. That, that's a great point. Also, just another, like, when they were all going after Brayden, you know, he didn't hear shit from Dotonin and Xavier. Not a peep. Because they're confident. Yeah, because they don't give a they're fuck. Like, I don't need to worry and about Joey. this. Yeah. Right? Where was oh, yeah, Joey? Yeah. Yeah. Joey, not, not, a, not a peep. This, it's such information. I hope Charity can see the insecurities from these men and go, no, nope, red flag. Right? Like, you don't want somebody that's, like, so threatened by... Eh. I think part, show up later. I think yeah. she already sees it, which is why they're not so. getting attention, which is why they're blaming like it. She on, likes Aaron a lot. I don't think she does. Okay, good. <laughs> I think Aaron's. I I think she likes him more than I want her to because I find him to be. He's like he's my protector. So I'm like, shut up. Like, I hate that. He's not protecting tail. you. I hate that for her. Like you're good. She doesn't you don't need. Him. She doesn't need yeah. protecting. So like that's already like. And when a guy inserts that of like I'm here to protect you, you're. I don't trust you. I've had again. I've had that before, and I'm like, w- this was not even needing to be said. You just put this here as if I'm in danger. I've never thought I was in danger. This yeah, is and just what danger weird. is she in? Because she's talking to a guy who's like pragmatic and thinking, you know what? I think I she's want- weak, sir. Yeah, I fucking died when when they were like, how? What? How, like when they're in front of the Girl Scouts, and, and I saw I saw the word content written down. You could kind of see it, and they're all like on one knee. It's like fuck you, Aaron. You and then literally he won. don't know her. He won that I, because I know, he said the right thing. Because they loved a reward that bullshit. And I he, love it. And, and, and I mean, fucking. That's when I really loved Brayden. When it was like, I just want to feel content, and he's just standing there so <laughs> confidently. I mean, it was such a dumb answer of Brayden, just but like the defiance well, because he's in not him. thinking. Of, he's actually thinking of what's true for him. Yeah. Which is actually like amazing, but he didn't have a motive of like, I want to say the right thing so that I win the thing. Yeah, he's like that John Lennon quote where there's like, the teacher said, what do you want to be when I grow up? And I said, happy. Like, you know, that <laughs> like, yeah. he's doing that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's I a was, truthful I answer. It's not going to get was, you any points. I was but. laughing so hard when he just said that because you knew it was like the wrong answer, even though it was the honest answer. But I don't I don't like how charity is rewarding that behavior. I don't either. I don't think he should have won by is? saying on a on one knee. 
I'm like, you don't know that. You just said that for the to win, and you did, and this isn't working. Question, a bit controversial. Okay. Uh oh. Is charity a recovering pick me? Can you define pick me? Uh, does someone who is their default is to prioritize being picked and getting someone that they've decided in their mind that they really like, usually by kind of superficial or like, you know, looks or chemistry or the spark and prioritize feeling validated and picked by that person rather than building a strong mutual emotional connection based off of actual compatibility and, you know, things like that. I mean, based off of that answer of her picking Aaron, it's leaning towards that way. And giving too much credit for lines like, you know, getting down on one knee or just knowing she's just insisting. And again, it's partly the show's fault because the show like wants the leads to say this. But like, I wish, I wish Charity being the uh, family, practi- you know, what, what's her official title? Her licensed family, licensed and family their therapist, therapist. To validate behaviors like thoughtful, like, Hey, I just I, I want to take it slow and get to know you and, and build yeah. this connection yeah. rather than validating someone who doesn't know her saying, I want to get down on one knee. Yes. I'm here for you. Uh-huh. I'm only here to get engaged to you. In fact, I wish Charity would reward the possibility of one of the guys saying, you're an amazing person, Charity. There's so much about you that I admire, but I just don't know if we're compatible. And, and as a result, I think maybe just I should leave. And I wish she would reward that rather yeah, than punish it then punish it and, and take it as rejection and get yes. so rattled and then try to spin the truth to the other guys as if implying that she sent Brayden home when in fact he sent himself home. And it was the fact that he sent himself home that bothered her the most. I think I mean, if it were me and Brayden was like, I'm I don't know. I'm so hesitant. This whole thing is scaring the shit out of me. I wouldn't be like, well, then why are you here? I would hope that I would have the bandwidth as a as a woman, as a human to go. I really appreciate that honesty. Sometimes I feel the same way. Yeah, I hear you. Do you want to stay? I'd love for you to stay. Um, But if it's too much and you're not like 100 percent feeling like you could see this, then, yeah, leave. But like it's not personal to charity. He's made that very clear that 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 he's struggling and that he's not sure and he's being honest about it. Like, that's what every woman says that they want. I mean, that's what I want. It's just like, I just want your truth. That's what's most attractive to me. You admitting right where you're at right now, but you being like, no, you are the one and I'm going to be here the, till the end. I'm like, ah, get away, get away, get away. But, you know, that's just me. I have often said that going back on The Bachelor, you know, in my 20s, I was kind of serial monogamist. I had a lot of bad breakups and did a lot of self-work and I felt like I really kind of found myself in my late 20s, early 30s. And then I went on The Bachelor and then I've said this where I felt like I I basically relapsed back into who Mm. I was as a 21 year old. Mm. And so stakes are high. I I think, yeah, this environment can do that. And I think this environment, uh, while obviously a great opportunity for charity, and I'm glad she's our bachelorette and I'm enjoying watching her, it it doesn't, it exposes everyone well, why? We're because we're uh, around our peers yeah. in a college like setting, in a high school like setting. So our memory is going back to like, oh, I remember this being around, you know, drinking and, and you know, in the real world, you're not like that. You're like in your solitude and you're you're growing and you're living alone or whatever. And you're meeting people in a very different thing. And so they're probably unconsciously going backwards, which makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's like how you go to your like childhood home and then you're like, oh, my God, I should not like yes. I'm, the tone I'm using with my mom. Like, I'm not saying anything bad, but I am like getting or your so... high school reunion. You're like, oh, my God, why am I intimidated by the popular girl again? Why am I shrinking? I need to expand yeah. to who I am now. I'm this person. And now. you have no support system. You know, you don't have anyone there who knows you well enough and and, and has seen you evolved into this mature adult and no your your new support system is a bunch of like again like as i've said friends who would tell you to buy the boat because they want to go on your boat and they're mm-hmm. like yeah no totally they're the best you're like i love yeah. that for the, for you and it's just like it's not you're generally not getting so we're giving her a little bit of a pass good okay? advice yeah, yeah totally i just don't think her and um what's his face with the hair caleb? Are, they are not a mat caleb is that his name? Was that the, the wrestler? Uh, Caleb B. No, oh. sorry, the dad. The dad. They're not a match to me at all. Joey? Sean. No. With the hair? No. Uh, oh, Sean. <laughs> oh, Sean. 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 They're not. Oh, with the dad. No with way. the bad dad. Yeah, with, with the bad, the bad dad. dad. With the bad dad. Sean with the bad dad. Sean with the bad dad. 
Uh, They're just not a match to me at all. No. Vibrationally, it's all off. Why yeah. is he doing so well? I don't know. Nothing about him tracks. Maybe they want about him, charity. Maybe they want to meet the family. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to keep him for... Yeah. Well, Maybe it's going to be an interesting hometown. Well, good question. I, I, are we all in agreement that uh, Doton, Xavier, and Joey are locks? Yes. But who's the fourth? That tall... Oh. Tanner? Mm. Out... <laughs> Tanner, maybe, maybe. He'll pop at out of nowhere. Aaron, yeah. <laughs> you kind of have to give it to oh, Aaron at this point. Yeah, they've given him a lot of time on the Tanner screen. did get more airtime this for it. episode. Yeah, Tanner could be I was a late like, bloomer. I've never seen you before. Who the fuck is yeah. this guy? Yeah, he could be a late bloomer. So yeah. you, who do you got? You got Sean, Tanner, Aaron. Mm -hmm. We have six left. Yeah, Sean, Tanner, and Aaron. Yeah. Those are the three that got the roses, yeah. Well, because we, uh, Xavier, Doton, and, and Joey, we're, we're locked. We're good, we're good on them. So yep. those are your top three. Yep. And then we have three more. One spot available for hometowns. It's got to be Aaron. Right? He fought too hard. <laughs> he protected her too much. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to say go. I'm going to say there's going to be I I'm going to say no. I'm going to say Tanner. That'd be fun. I'd rather it be Tanner. I like him so far. Yeah, they were From hanging out in I've the seen. woods. <laughs> like yeah. deep in the woods. I feel like Aaron's going to get a one Aaron's going to go home on a 101 one next <gasps> episode. Nice. Oh. Nice. Yeah, that's my prediction. And then Brayden's going to come back <laughs> yeah, there's, during there's, their one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, right. We're going to see another pair Someone of Someone does shoes. come back in, in the previous... Oh, yeah. Is it an ex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> it's the brother. It's the brother. It's Nehemiah. <laughs> it's probably, honestly, it's probably the brother. It would be dirty of she the producers to bring back her ex. They showed like a ring or something, That'd right? Be dirty. Is it Brayden? Unless that was... No, I think Brayden's... If he knows what's good for him, he'll just... Well, Brayden, I don't, the I don't shot know if Brayden, Brayden knows what's good for him. He does No. Alone. He retreated to where he felt safe. The party bus. Yeah, yeah I stand just, by that. Yeah. It's funny that he, he like, didn't came, came in, in the party the bus. Woods. Yeah. Did you yeah. see that? Like, yeah. As if he was the Sasquatch. With like his Birkenstocks? Yeah. Clip flops. He doesn't need not a even Birkenstocks at all. I if only they had been Birkenstocks. <laughs> yeah, if he lost the earrings in the scarf. <laughs> he doesn't need that at all. Or just have like a hoop. Yeah. Or like a stud. The dangly? The dang yeah, we got like two was, dream catchers I feel like I've dated on. too many musicians. I'm like a little brainwashed in that area. Where I'm like, it's it. That's the part I hated about it. Because it seemed like. He was trying too much. Clearly, he's got yeah. a big personality. He did, he just didn't need it. He didn't yeah. need it. But I also, I could see myself supporting a friend on a rebrand on The Bachelor. Like, if they were like, oh, like, I I'm really getting into this kind of style. I could see myself being an sure. enabler and being like, yeah, no, go off. That's so fun. Yeah. Go for it. You, uh, you don't make fashion. Take uh. You do not take fashion risks on The Bachelor. That's just... Words to live by. <laughs> just... Don't do it. Don't do it. Unless you're charity. Even, even, it's, even, if, do even if it's cashmere. I believe he's had the earrings. Because <laughs> for someone who only like really recently got back into earrings, wearing even like small hoops at first was like, ow, this hurts. I can't even imagine the huge earrings that he wears. He'd, he'd be in pain. And he's he not. I mean, he's he so was in the military. I think he's pretty tough. All is well. Ear pain is like completely different. <laughs> It's not like the army guys are yanking on his ears. You have to get used to this. Yeah, this is what the world know. is like. I would want to fight a war with a sinus infection. Well, I think that about <laughs> does it for the Bachelorette. Uh, Madden, you have, is this a new book? Nah. Well, <laughs> when did it come out? 2020. Great. I started writing it January 2020, and then, which was a great time to write it, and then it came out July 2020. Wait, that's oh, great. Wait, Turn around. Gross. Yeah, it was really quick. Yeah. That's so impressive. I went through the craziest. Um, you wrote it in couple, like a month or a no, day? no, no, like a few months. It took me like but two I had like, years. No, but <laughs> that is true. I had a lot of help. I had this indie publisher One that was sentence. just like really keeping me accountable, and I had nothing else to do, and I already knew what I was going to say, and I yeah, I had just gone through um, a huge, huge life transformation. I went, I got married, and a month after the wedding, found out that I, more or less, for lack of a better term, like married a con artist Ooh. and that led to the biggest healing and growth opportunity of my life and I was like okay you know I brought everybody on my journey uh, anyone who had followed me on social media of this this love journey and you know fell for somebody that was like a familiar thing right and definitely got blindsided and taught me that like oh I wasn't trusting my gut I wasn't I have no ability to trust my body I was trusting his words over my own intuition and this needs to change i need to learn to trust myself and so the book is not about that there is a chapter of like what happened because you know i brought everybody again on this love story but i didn't post about it i did not post any texts i did share about like the lessons that i learned from that which is one keep your heart open uh, just because one man's in pain um, doesn't mean you need to now shut down your heart and i'm really glad i didn't because i'm now with somebody else three and a half years later and we're pregnant 
and he's wonderful. That. And he's the opposite of what I would ever choose. In fact, it's been a very slow burn. He's not a roller coaster. It's it's very peaceful. I opened it up to chapter five. Immediately caught my attention. The guy who cried in a strip club. Yes. Oh, yes. Good times. Yeah. <laughs> How did that come to pass? Um, my I think I was 23 at the time. And my roommate who was like, I lived with her for two months. She's like, I'm going to go dance at this at this club if you want to come. And I so I was just going to support her. I was heavily drinking at the time. And, and uh, I went and I met with this guy and we sat across from each other and we got to talking and he was an actor, but he was struggling like a, a lot of actors are these days and uh, were at the time and he started crying and tearing up. And I thought it was so beautiful and authentic. And I was just like, I've never seen like this kind of truth before. So I was captivated by it and then dated him for eight months and it began to be a little too much. What did you learn from that relationship? I was very newly not drinking at right after that moment. And so he kind of because he didn't drink, I was like, I realized what I love even more than drinking is like love and attention. That's like my number one drug is like love and having that kind of like connection with somebody or the illusion of love. I think I learned from that. Well, he was very possessive and jealous, and I just don't vibe well with that. I'm mm. the only child. I do not like to feel like I'm controlled. I'm, my number one priority is feeling free enough to be who I am where I'm at. And so through that, I learned I'm not going to be with somebody that's like thinks it's just going to be you and I in the world and we're never going to need to interact with anybody else. And so that was like a true test of I got to get out of this and choose myself. Well, it seems like a really interesting book. And I'm guessing, correct me if I'm wrong, Madden, but if you're someone listening to this uh, episode and you are going through a rough patch in life and, and feeling like things aren't just working out and you're thinking everything's just kind of sucky right now, this might bring you some inspiration. Some humor, inspiration, guidance, um, if you've ever struggled with addiction some perspective, or heartache. Too. Yes, because yeah. it will work out. And if you have that kind of narrative of like everything always works out for me, I mean, we we are what we say we are and what we tell ourselves is the most important thing. And so if we tell ourselves it's funny. How it I really out. love the title because a lot of people love to say things like everything happens for a reason. I hate that phrase, but I do love saying things will generally work out if you let it play out. You know, if you are open to learning from your mistakes and you're open to kind of learn some lessons, things do work out. You yeah, know, not they, the way you expected or necessarily wanted, but if you let the hurt settle and then you say, hey, what can I learn from this? Even if things weren't my fault or I felt victimized, but what could I learn? Things will. Yeah. Having a sense of curiosity is always very helpful to be like, OK, what did I learn from this? What do I need to know moving forward? It's all information. If I just don't make everything, you know, we like to make things wrong or right or place people above or below us. And it's like, stand back, get curious. I'm interested to know more. More will be revealed. Then it kind of just is what it is. And I don't have to make such a story out of everything, right? Like in my book, when I talk about the marriage and what happened, it's very easy to be like, he's wrong, he's wrong. Or I can go, okay, what did I learn from this? Wow, I realized that I wasn't really, I really had a sense of urgency when meeting this person. Okay, where has that gotten me in trouble before? How do I step back and pause when I feel excited and urgent and, and let things play out a little bit more? There's just so many lessons. And I think like our, our biggest hurdles and our biggest hurt, like that's where the most growth is. And it's like such an opportunity. Like I really am so grateful for all like the hard things that I've been through because I mean, unless we learn the lessons, it'll just keep happening again in some way, shape or form. But I feel like even my current relationship now is living proof that like I outgrew that that old man and that was scared and didn't trust herself. And that's great. And I want other people to have the opportunity too. Mm. also because when they get cheated on, a lot of women will or people will generalize and be like, oh, all men suck. I'm just not going to date anymore. And I'm like, that's not the lesson here <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> at all. Like, totally. don't generalize. One man was in pain. He was hurt. Her people hurt people. It's okay. Like he he didn't do that to me. He was in pain. Right. You and know? you can have autonomy without blaming yourself for other people's actions. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We're well, responsible for how and we, we feel. Have like, you know, especially if you're a heterosexual person, your only experience in dating is to date the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. And relationships are painful and hard and dating is difficult. And so you're going to, if you're a heterosexual man only dating women, chances are you're going to get hurt at some point by a woman. Or, and then vice versa. And it's like, yeah, we have to be careful not to 
you might you might be able to say I have 10 horror stories of 10 terrible men or 10 terrible women but you haven't dated everyone and even if a lot yeah. of people suck they're as I've always said, you're only looking for one. And so you gotta, you always gotta shift through dirt to find gold. I love that. Yeah. You only need one. You only need one. Truly. And there's well, so many out there. Just keep looking. It seems like an absolute great book. I'm gonna, thank you, thank you for gifting it to me. Absolutely. I'm gonna check it out. Uh, such a pleasure having you on, man. Thank and I you hope so to have much. you on again. Absolutely. Anytime. And congratulations on the pregnancy. Thank yeah. you. How far along are you, if I may ask? Um, let me just show them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Grab that belly. <laughs> for all the people um, watching on YouTube. 13 and a half weeks. We got it on the first try. 13 and a Thank effort. you. I'm, it's my dream to be a mother. So very, very excited. Very excited. Obviously, I went through all the emotions of fear and what does this mean about my freedom? And oh my God, I'm scared. I'm scared. Have you experienced any, what was, what's the first 13 weeks been like? Have you any, any, this is surprising. This is what I learned. This is what I experienced. Yeah. I mean, I was definitely shocked um, and surprised. I just had made an assumption that it would take six months to a year based off of other people's experience what did come as a shock i was crying a lot that was easy. <laughs> i mean yeah i would cry a lot anyway but i was crying a lot like eat way more and so that was really interesting to me and trying to be like okay because i've always been somebody that in the past would just struggle with my emotions not struggle to feel them but had judgment when i would feel them as if it was too much um, and luckily the partner I have is like more, please more. Yes, please let it all out. Like we love the feminine. Like I think the masculine energy is craving the feminine to just be like raw. At least that's what I tell myself. Um, and so that was interesting. And it's, it's also lots of nausea, the physical changes. You know, I had moments where I thought, forget it. I think I just wanted the idea of having a kid. This is not actually worth it. And so reaching my pain tolerance and just kind of Again, finding amusement in those moments and knowing that it'll pass. Again, I had a great partner that kind of stood over me when I would say things like that. And he'd go, yeah, that's all part of it. This is going to pass. And so it kind of gave this levity. He's been really helpful in, in holding the space for all the emotions that I've had. And now that I'm in the second trimester, it's so much easier. I'm like so ex I'm like more of the, in the excitement of, of being a mother and having a child. And I also think all the fear and pain and scare, like I'm hearing that that's very normal and common because the body's changing so much in the first trimester that like they say that that's one of the hardest parts. I mean, I'm sure giving birth is not it's up there harder <laughs> um, and then having the baby and having your life change forever. But I'm just taking it one day at a time. I'm not going to, you know, project into the future and take on everybody else's ideas of what it's like to have it, you know, because... Everyone has different opinions. They're like, oh my God, it's going to be a change your life. It's going to be the worst. And then there's other people who are like, it's literally the best thing that's ever happened. This is my favorite portion of life that I've lived. And I'm like, I like that one. I'm going to choose that one. Because I generally like to go in with my own experience. Like I did ayahuasca and not recently, <laughs> just yesterday. Tuesday. Yeah, the first trimester was really hard. <laughs> and I remember having people be like, it's, you know, it's the worst thing ever. Your soul's going to die. And I remember a moment before doing it, being like, oh, I get to create my own experience. And then it reminded, I was like, oh, that's reality. I get to create my, my reality with the way that I see life and the things that I say to myself. The power is within me now. I don't have to succumb and be reactive to the world. And I remember having a beautiful ayahuasca experience. And I was like, had I had that, not had that moment before, like that changed the intention of the whole experience. And so I'm like, okay, I want to remember that for this pregnancy is like, I get to when we feel like we choose it, whether it's pain, like, okay, I choose pain. That's something that me and my man say a lot is like, if we're like stressed out, okay, I'm choosing stress. So at least we're back in the driver's seat. And that's helped a lot. That as makes well. a lot of sense. I know exactly what you're talking Well, not about the pregnancy, but in terms of that, it's a, a mindset of like, when you say choosing pain or just being aware of it, or just like, yeah. Or just, you know, embracing a feeling rather than resisting it. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that adds so much more pain resisting yeah. what is when I just go, OK, this is amusing. That too shall Look, pass. Kind of, like yeah. things, feelings. That's the thing. Feelings are temporary. Everything's you know? always changing all the time. Even the good. Madden, just really enjoyed it. What, Thank you. What a me great too. Conversation. That was so fun. Uh, please come back anytime. Great. Yeah. Let me know. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys for listening. As always, don't forget on Thursday, we have an amazing episode coming up with the one and only Gina Kirschenheiner from Real Housewives of Orange County. A lot to get into with her. Their current season is up and running and full of drama. And we have a lot of questions for Gina. And we promise you will get you the answers you are desiring. 
Also, don't forget we have a Better Date Than Never live this week, Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. We also have Vile Files Plus, which is available as always. And we will be recording this week a recap of Season 1, Episodes 1 through 3 of Vanderpump. Dropping soon. Wow. Can't wait. Also, we have our updates, uh, uh, update specials available to you behind Vile Files Plus, our pop culture roundup available every Friday. So much content for you avail- available to you. Free to sign up, seven day free trial. Let's go to vilefiles.com. Come. I said come. Once in a while, I said come <laughs> on accident. It was a. Ugh. That was kind of an in between. I have to enunciate. I'm sorry. It's an accent. Is it? I think you have an accent. Vilefiles.com. Mid- yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. It's an accent. Yeah, yeah, you're French. Yeah. There you go. Oh, Manon, where can they find you? Uh, Instagram, TikTok. Man and Matthews. Man and Matthews, uh, one N, one T. I have a podcast, Serious But Funny, and then my book, Funny How It Works Out. Great. Find or all her great stuff. If you like uh, spiritual stuff, uh, Man Infestation Ooh. is my other account. Mm. Ooh. Subscribe to that. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> baby coming January 19th. All right. Look yeah. Out. That baby's going to be giving a lot of good advice. <laughs> Do so they want to come on an Ask Nick episode? Yeah. You know what? You should come on an Ask Nick episode. Great. You know, people call in, we give advice. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Hells. Yeah, you were like, yeah, great. Sure. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I just needed a second. Yeah. <laughs> I did know that. Uh, bye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.